Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 5th, 2018. See, I got my Cinco de Mayo t-shirt on here for Cinco de Mayo. Anyway, with summer coming on and a lot of people, a lot of viewership is down on TDD Report, down to about 30 to 40 viewers, which I don't blame anybody. Being outside is much better than sitting inside at your computer, and I would encourage as much of that as possible. So what I'm going to do for the summertime is try to keep it to two subjects and keep the TDD report just a little shorter if possible. So um, what I want to talk about is the Mars InSight mission. A lot of you might not even been aware about it because they haven't been talking about it very much on any of the news services, but we're launching a probe. This will not be a rover type of thing that moves around Mars. This will be something that sits still on Mars and the InSight, the InSight probe has three different types of uh, instruments on it. One of them is the SICE instrument, and the SICE instrument will listen for seismic waves on the surface of Mars, and they'll shed light in the interior of the structure of the red planet. Uh, they do believe that Mars itself, it seems that it's uh, producing some earthquakes. There's a little bit of tectonic plate movement, although not in nearly as much as Earth. It's very, it's very more subtle, and you also get seismic waves for when there's a meteor strike. While well, doing either of these things, or during either of these things, if you can actually get a handle on the sound waves, and get the reflections back and examine them, you can actually tell a little bit of what's going on inside the planet and maybe be able to detect what's going on a little farther down in the different densities and things like that. But um, also along with that, there's the HP probe, and that's going to take Mars's temperature. This thing is going to actually dig down, and I don't know what's going to happen if it hits a rock or something, but they claim this thing is going to dig down 5 meters or about 16 feet, and it's going to take Mars's temperature. There's going to be various heat probes that will be left along the way and then the final heat probe will be down at about 16 feet and they want to get the difference between they want to get it down deep deep enough so that it can actually detect the heat radiating out from the interior and not be affected by the surface of the planet just like uh, Mars Earth is radiating heat off of the core because we have a mantle core but even if Mars does not have a mantle core it's still going to be in a cooling process even if it's way ahead of us because it's a smaller planet and only less than half the size of Earth, it's going to cool off a lot faster. But that does not mean it still isn't quite warm in the middle part. So we want to kind of get a handle on what the temperature difference is and how the heat is actually radiating out. Then there's also the rise, which is testing the uh, wobble of the planet itself. What happens is if a planet has more of a solid interior or more of a, a slushy liquid interior, it's going to wobble in different ways. So this rise instrument is going to measure the wobble of, of Mars and be able to get us enough information for that. So if you get a chance, all the links to everything below will be in the description. Now, I liked it when they did the rebroadcast of the takeoff of the rocket ship that took the InSight into space, that they took it all the way to about five or six minutes to where the stage is separated and they pretty much lost sight of it. So you get to see the whole thing from uh, about 15 seconds before launch to where the, the one main stage separates and also the uh, the, the panels on the nose cone actually separate off too and the probe is uh, out in the open of outer space so that's kind of cool too so and then next this was sent in by I think Navy Thomas 8 actually sent this link to me too um, demonstration proves nuclear fission system can provide space exploration power now this is something that we're gonna have to develop if we do want to actually have Mars colonies in the future we're gonna have to have not only a nuclear power system at least at first until we develop something better with technology we're gonna to have to have a scalable system that can generate power maybe in the levels of several thousand kilowatts maybe one two or three kilowatts all the way up to maybe a hundred kilowatts and this one here that they're demonstrating is going to be several kilowatts so NASA um, uh, NASA what introduced a safe efficient and plentiful energy that will be the key to the future of robotic and human exploration said Jim Ruder Nash's acting associate administrator for the space technology mission director in Washington I expect the kilopower project to be an essential part of lunar and Mars power architecture as they evolve. Kilopower is a small, lightweight fission system capable of providing up to 10 kilowatts of electrical power, enough to run several average households continuously for at least 10 years. Four kilopower units would provide enough power to establish the outpost. It looks to be, and I'll put a picture of it here, it looks to be about the size as far as uh, the width and the uh, length, to, or the width and the height, the width and the length to be about maybe the size of a refrigerator in a house and the height to be maybe about twice the size or a little bit more of an average refrigerator. So it says kilopower gives us the ability to do much higher power missions and to explore the shadowed craters of the moon. 
said Gibson. When we start sending astronauts for long stays on the moon or other parts, there's going to be required a new class of power that we've needed before. Yeah, this could also possibly come into play if we do it as a two-stage trip and go to the moon again first and establish an outpost and then journey on to Mars. Now, I like myself a little bit more of the, the Mars Direct version of it where we just, you know, we've already done the moon before, let's just go on to Mars. But, um, he says that uh, as far as testing this too, the thing about it is they tested it for safety and they said we threw everything we could at this reactor in terms of nominal and off-nominal operating scenarios and crusty passed with flying colors. The kilopower team conducted the experiment in four phases. The first two phases conducted without power confirmed that each component of the system behaved as expected. During the third phase, the team increased power to heat the core incrementally before moving on to the final phase. The experiment culminated with a 28-hour full power test that simulated a mission, including reactor startup, ramp to full power, steady operation, and shutdown. Now, they also simulated a lot of different failures. If you read the whole article, they had different components of the system fail. I don't know if they had more than one fail, but they at least talked about having single system failures and having the thing not become dangerous or in any way endanger the uh, astronauts or the people that are walking around on Mars or anything like that. So it says they simulated power reduction, failed engines, and failed heat pipes showing the system could continue to operate and successfully handle multiple failures. So I'm guessing by that they mean they probably had cascading failures too, where they had two or more failures happen and make sure uh, it would never became unsafe and in a lot of cases just kept on operating normally. So and being that it's scalable. That's the other thing too. You can develop a lot of power systems that work in a certain way. Like maybe you could develop something that would produce 10k of power all the time, but then can you actually reduce it to 3k for that and have it still work in the same way with the same design? Or would you have to come up with a totally different design? So this design happens to be scalable. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care everybody. I will catch you next week.